Why are you laughing, Destiny? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to The Perspective, this is Raylene Arnaz And I'm Destiny Denise And And welcome to The Perspective Oh, I was gonna say I'm a little sick, but welcome, welcome (laughs) (laughs) My voice, I have to let you know, give it a little disclaimer at the beginning Like y'all, a little under the weather, but uh, yeah Okay Hey y'all Hey Hey (laughs) So Destiny, how was your week? My week was interesting. Okay, beginning, I'm going to tell y'all, beginning with that eclipse. I know I told y'all last week it was on Tuesday, but it was really on Monday. Okay, anyways, I felt like I felt like I was about to go to heaven or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I felt gravity pulling me. I know, real, real talk, I'm driving on the freeway. And as the eclipse happens, I wear crystals. And, like, my body got really heavy. Like, it felt like my body was sinking into the seat. I had to hurry up and take my crystals off. I threw them in my cup holder. As soon as I threw it in the cup holder, the whole weight of the car just got heavy. Like, somebody just sat on the top of it. And I'm just like, oh, snap. Like, I'm trying to guide it and drive it as best to my ability as I can. And then I look in front of me. I'm on the freeway. I look in front of me. All the cars are breaking. Like, every single car is, like, breaking. I'm like, oh, this is not the time to be doing this right now. (laughs) Like, I have to get off. Like, and I got off the freeway. I was, like, shaking. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I had to call somebody, tell somebody, like, hold on. Did someday right, but overall, I had a um, I had my audition this week. How did you? How I went in there. I tried. You know, I killed it. You know, like with with modeling, it's real straightforward. Like, hi, yeah, yeah um, cop car. You know, what do you do? The blah blah. Take four shots. Blah, blah, blah. We'll call you type thing. But you know, I just went in there. You know, walked in with confidence. Even when I was speaking to the security guard, I was speaking to him with confidence. Like, you got, you got right? Like, I'm here for a modeling casting. Why? Like, he like, oh yeah, part. I'm like, okay. Had to, you know, have my little walk, a little strut. But how was your week? Uh, my week was good. Um. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm, <laughs> I'm tired. tired. Um, I'm a little tired. You know, we were on set yesterday with local astronauts. We worked with them on a series called That Box featuring us, The Perspective. And it was a really fun show. Um, men are funny. Yeah, y'all are hilarious. It was a show pretty much about us answering questions that men asked us women to answer yeah. and it was really really funny you guys are really intriguing up. like one of the questions was like what is what is, what is a bitch and I was just like oh. <laughs> okay well y'all want to know my definition right. I guess I can tell you but it was just hilarious to get a uh, you know because you really don't get to get into a male's mind really because men are very like prote- sheltered yeah, they're real like no I don't want to show my feelings I don't want to ask things that might hint something so it's funny to just really it's really straightforward get y'all like boom questions. to the point yeah one of the questions that I thought was funny ah <laughs> uh, is our periods aligned oh my goodness <laughs> I was like. Is y'all that know really about a real that? thing? <laughs> like, yeah, it is, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, definitely alignment. We be in a straight line. Like, <laughs> it was, it was a really fun show. Shout out to my Drew Rob at Local Astronauts. Thank you guys for having us. Hope to be back soon. Um, but overall, a good week. Um, just work, man. Work, 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 work. Work, work. work is work. <laughs> but I plan to get through work. You know, got to get this money. Get this coin, secure the bag. Secure the bag. All right, so this week's episode of The Perspective, we're talking about our teenage years. Taking it back. Throw back Taking Thursday. Taking it back to our teenage years. So 23 was 13? 10 years. So we taking it back a decade, all right? And that leaves for us. some yeah, for some people though, yeah. sorry to cut you off. It's not, yeah, not going not back. Not for us. But yeah, but for us it's going back to thirteen. Ten, yeah. But you know, if uh, we have older listeners, younger listeners. Just go back to your teenage. Yeah, just go back. Take take a take a trip down memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to do that. So yeah. and that leads us to this question of the day. Question of the day is what advice would you give your fifteen year old self and why? I put I really wrote a letter to myself because I really thought about it. Dear Ray Ray. (laughs) Dear Ray Ray. (laughs) (laughs) Baby girl, you could do anything you want to do if you put your mind to it. You're going to take over the world. Don't let nobody get in the way of following your dreams. It's okay to be different. People are not going to understand you. They and they will make fun of you. And that's where you come in. Stand up for yourself. Talk back. Speak up. And stand your ground. 
These niggas ain't shit. <laughs> Watch who you call your friends and follow your heart and follow your dreams. Okay. That's what I wrote to my 15-year-old self. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, it's, so, it's so funny because, okay, I didn't write a letter. I didn't write a, like a Dear Destiny. I just, you know, put like little bullet points. But basically what I would tell my 15-year-old self is don't conform. Don't conform to what people say because they're uncomfortable in, they're uncomfortable with stepping outside of the shell. They see you taking those steps to, you know, of nonconformity, and they want to keep you inside that box. Don't don't allow them to. Because, man, I, reflecting back, like, for example, like, people used to tell me I'm loud. I used to be like, oh, my God. And for so long, I let that, like, weigh me down, and I became quiet. And then it became, you don't talk. Your face is mean. When, like, why you don't? And I'm just like, well, damn, what do y'all want? Like... I can't, and baby girl, like I said, baby girl, just just don't conform. Um, another thing I would tell my 15-year-old self is stay true and remain yourself no matter how others feel because there's going to come a point in time where people are going to question your character. People are going to try to use those reverse psychology techniques to where they're the victim and you're always the bully. You're always the one making the mistakes. It's life. You're going to make mistakes. Don't let those things weigh you down and don't let others' opinions of your mistakes weigh you down. Um... Be fearless and not apologetic when it comes to following your dreams because ultimately you are in control of every aspect of your life. Whether you believe it or not, you you can and you will make a difference in this world. And, oh, yeah, your parents was right. <laughs> These niggas ain't shit. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just stay focused. And all the right things will come to you. As long as you keep your smile bright and your mind straight, everything going to be all right. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree to that. I just feel like when we were young, we were so naive to the Ooh, world, man. Yeah. Like, y'all, I was, I, I, like, growing, like, being 15, like, going back to that age, oh, me and my mom was, like, the worst enemies. Me, yeah. I couldn't stand my brother at that time. I felt like, honestly, I didn't have no one to talk to. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone was looking at me and judging me. Mm -hmm. it, I, oh, my God, like, 15? Fifteen was a definitely. Man, a, a, I was still a trying to find year. myself and who I was. Like I kind of knew already, like what I wanted. I kind of like knew the. What's the word? I. What's the word I'm looking for? The kind of like when you close your eyes and vision what you want to do. It's kind of like I seen myself. Is but I didn't. I didn't know exactly what it was. But I knew. I'm not going to have being a lawyer or a doctor or a regular 9 to 5. I knew I wasn't going to have that. Yes. I knew I was going to be something completely opposite. See, it was totally different for me. From 15, that was kind of the start of everyone around me. Like, you're going to be a lawyer. You're going to be this. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be something of, you know, stature and prominence in, you know, your community. And it's just like... Being a lawyer and doctor, it never really stuck to me. So, like, from that point, from, like, 15 to, like, 22 I was so lost like so lost and bouncing my dad used to make fun of me because I switched majors so many times because I knew I was uh, I wasn't right I was it didn't feel right being in you know a certain certain field I tried law I tried science I tried arts I tried uh Journalist, I try so many different things, and I'm just like, I know, like you said, I know I'm going to be something. I know I'm going to be someone, but I just don't know. I don't know where I'm going to end up, and that's where the conformity, where I would give my advice, because I conform. I was just, okay, I don't know where I'm going. Maybe they know where that. I put my life in somebody else's hands. Like, I yeah. let them dictate my path. I let others' opinions influence what I wanted to do. I see my friends. I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should just do what they're doing because that's the right thing to do, so you know everybody's saying doing it so let me just do it too and ultimately I think that's what made me slip into a depression because I got so lost I was just like it just like I fell like boom and I was Cause just after like because after damn. I like I'm not going to say I dropped out of college but after I kind of knew like the classes and the, 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 the major that I was trying to get in college when I knew like this is not for me I took the time off from school to really like search within myself like I was I was lost but I knew I'm like I kind of already had like um, in my mind I already knew like it's so much money out here like 
I can really do this. Like, I cannot see myself graduating. I can see myself graduating from college, but I didn't see myself going to, like, a big university and being, like, thousands of dollars in debt because at that time when I did decide to, like, not go to school anymore in 2015, like, 2016, um, all the people that I went to high school with are graduating college, and they're like, I'm already in debt. I'm already, yeah. I'm not even ready for this. I'm not even ready for that. And yeah. that made me go, well, they made it seem in high school something totally different. Yeah, definitely. And that's when I really decided to dig deep with inside myself and realize, I know I can, I can, I can do it. Yeah. If I, if I stay on the right path in the right way, I know I can accomplish anything. Yeah, that's why I said being in control. Being in control definitely helps you. Because Absolutely. you you, you are strong mind strong minded, strong willed and you know, you you really see yourself, you have that ambition and that drive, that same ambition and drive that they try to implement us in school. Like, you know, get good grades and you know, all of that, but you have to apply that same sense to life. Once exactly. you once you get out of that that conformed structure of everybody f- that that's realistically because you know like how they say it's against the law to keep a child away from school. Like you have to do that. So I feel like that's what it's prepping you for. Yeah. It's not necessarily the content but the structure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just I just feel like I just, I just wish I could really give that advice to myself while I was fifteen. Cause yeah, I would be so you know much it, better. It, but, but think about it like this: give it to your fifteen-year-old daughter if you have one. Exactly. I cannot wait to put my daughter up on. Gas. Like, listen here, girl. Cause my mom. But never you know what? She's that. not gonna listen though because. That's what happened. It's yeah. a cycle because my mama tried to put me up on game and I'm just like, my ah, mom never uh, put me on game. <laughs> That's the thing. My mom sheltered me. Like when I would ask her things, this would make me rebel. Rebel so much mm. because my mom wouldn't tell me nothing. She, mm. she kept everything a secret. She sheltered me mm. from it. So it was like, as soon as I hit 18, it was like, the chains unlocked. <laughs> Speaking of uh, going back, knowing what you know now, what age or year would you go back to? Me personally, I would if I could go back to an age, I would go back to nineteen because that was a pivotal point in my life where a situation happened where I had the ability. It, it could have been life changing for me. But I didn't take advantage of the opportunities that were given to me to be able to. It's like I was at I was presented with two roads, and it was like okay, go left or go right. Okay, which what would like what, what what's the situation? Yeah. Okay, okay. So when I was nineteen, um, well, my grandmother passed away when I was twelve, and well, my great grandmother she passed away when I was twelve, and um. She, on her will, she left me because my grandmother. She didn't really have any family out here. Like my gra- my my great grandmother was from Texas, and all her siblings and like they all are in Texas. She was the only one living out here. Her and one of my like gr- my cousins or something like that. But mm-hmm. my grandfather, my mom's dad, passed away. My great grandfather, her husband, passed away. So she didn't really have anybody out here except us her great grandchildren and it was only at the time it was only three of us me and my two brothers because when she made her will my little sister wasn't born yet oh okay so when she passed away it was unexpectedly because she passed away from carbon monoxide poisoning it wasn't like she was sick or you know like she was a healthy she was almost 80 years old like healthy woman and she passed away from carbon monoxide poisoning her will she left me and my brother some money we weren't able to get the money until we each turned 18 i didn't get my money until i turned 19 because the process was slowed up um but i had to go to court and stuff and you know make sure that it's me who was getting the money like it's not my mom trying to you know be on no scam stuff but yeah i got i got a lump sum of money and you know i got a car like the car i still have my car today but i feel like i could have done so much more knowing what i know now Oh, yeah. my God. Like, absolutely. I, that was five years ago. So imagine where I would be today. And I always reflect on that moment with the what ifs and the, you know, shoulda, coulda, what ifs. Because just that that little point in my life could have really changed my life around. Because yeah. I, I got a large amount of money to be able to do something with it. And, you know, at that time, I was 19. I wasn't really 
thinking about moving out. Like, I had a good family home. It wasn't like, yeah. you know, I, I didn't get the money and just went and moved out and, you know, did nothing stupid. Because at the time, I didn't even have a job. Yeah. So I'm. I was in school. I was just a college student, just pursuing, you know, jumping major to major, confused as hell. Um, <laughs> but I, I lived. I lived so like you would swear I was. I was doing drugs or something. Like I was drug. People used to think I was a drug dealer, but yeah, because <laughs> I ha- I have that car, like the charger with the rims and the tent and all that. And then you got all this money. You always, you know. And then at the time, I was a real big shoe head. I was in the shoes really tough. I used to buy all the Jordans, like everything. But that was not even the point that that I yeah. want to go back to. I want to go back to that first pivotal moment. Like, okay, you got this money. What you gonna do with it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, all right, I know what I'm gonna do. Like, oh, I would have started. Girl, I would have started a business. Right. Off top, off rip. Right. I would have been like, nope. And it's crazy because business. I actually tried to start a business when I was 19. But it never it went sunk downhill. That was my first business tip. My second business attempt was Neutral Talk. Mm. Yeah. That went left. Mm. Then it was then I was like, this Neutral Talk I lit the fire for neutral me to do this. Neutral Talk was definitely interesting. Yeah, that was very interesting. But if I can go back to any age or year, which one would it be and why? I want to go back to 18 because 18 is when I decided to be, Man, I decided to be a little daredevil. A little liberal, huh? It was like 18, I'm grown. It's the United <laughs> States. I'm finna do what I want, when I want, how I want. That's exactly how I thought about it. Oh, wow. And I was really reckless 18 years old. Like, just out here doing baby stuff with my baby friends. Like, we was really out here just wild and Wow, Lynn. <laughs> but I had so much fun because that's when I felt the most free of my entire lifetime. And that's what made me get, I'm not going to say maybe get hooked to parties, but that's what made me really love that party lifestyle because everyone in the party is so free. Yeah. And like certain parties, it was just this one particular party I went to. Um, oh, Lord, I, I done did some stuff. Uh-huh. Man, so... This one party, when I walked in, it felt like 90s vibes. Mm. And i never forget it because everybody was dancing with each other. And it was just like, the music was good. Everybody was like, this was the first party where I genuinely felt safe. And I was ready to just tear the house down. That's exactly what we did, too. But house parties, for me, are like the best parties. And I went to nothing. I went to majority house parties when I was 18. I was just a little daredevil, just meeting people, lying. Lying? <laughs> like, little. lying about, like, oh, like, what you do? Oh, I do this. No, I didn't want to do that. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, I was trying to make myself sound a little better than what I was, but. You're working at Sears, huh? <laughs> ah. Finessing out of Sears. Ooh, Lord. I Jesus. can't. I can't. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to talk about, you know, some of the dance moves, movies, and also actors and actresses that we liked back in the 90s, 2000s, and 2000s and beyond. We're also going to talk about the tween years and our teenagers, our teenage perspective and the teenagers now. So stay tuned. Whoa. Part. Oh, okay. We back. We back. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back to the perspective. If you guys are just now tuning in, we're talking about our teenagers. TBT. 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 Throwing it back to our teenage years. Now, this week's segment ep- on I said episode. Jesus, I'm skipping ahead of myself. This week's episode segment on the perspective. What's your perspective? We're talking about our tween years. Now, tween years is from the ages from like eight to twelve. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, my perspective on those tween years, I kind of, like, already understood myself. I kind of knew already, like, like, <laughs> everybody just asked me, like, Ray, my auntie. Okay, for example, my auntie, I was, I was one of those kids that you had to, like, repeat stuff to. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say that. Like, I'll be like, okay, say that one more time. <laughs> like, I, I, I make sure I understood it. <laughs> you got to process it. I got to process it. So let's just say, I was still, like, from 8 to 12, like, I was such a, 
I was like such a blonde, and I still am. Like oh, I'm real. Said, girl, I'm right. really. Ha- I still to this day I still struggle with left and right. <laughs> Not Wait. like that. No. Uh, no do you no, no, see no. how I look? No, not like, like that. <laughs> not like that. Not like that. I, this is my right. This is my left. I. Yes. But for example, Raylene, put this over there on the left hand side. I'll still put it on the right. I don't know why. I, I think it's because I'm so right dominant. Like, just for example, like, it don't go there. Go right here. And I'd be like, don't, doesn't matter where it go. Like, I don't know. And then what else? When I was taking driver school, <laughs> well, that's not in these years, but I still had that problem too. But <laughs> I was about to say, girl, you was driving at 12? What? No. <laughs> no, but um, but in those 20 years, I really understood myself. Like, I kind of knew, like, okay, Raylene, like, you're different. Like, I'm not, I kind of knew, like, and I knew I didn't have, like, no, no slow. I knew I wasn't, like, a stupid child, but I just knew, like, I'm not going to get it as fast as y'all, but I'm going to get it. And I just, it just, I had my own way of, like, learning certain things. Right, right. Like, um, with my multiplication, I did it the long way. And for some reason, long way helped me. What do you mean by long way? Okay, like, let's just say I really count on my fingers. Mm. I was one of them. I, the long way was the, the way for me. Like, um, the only thing that I used to, like, not take the long way was PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear and tell me. <laughs> hey, when I was learning that back in the day, that's the know. only thing I didn't order. I don't know. I was always good with math, but I, I, I hated like math. It, I didn't like it, but I was I bad. couldn't stand math. As soon as they started putting letters with the numbers, you lost me. That became but fun. It, it became fun to me. No, it became like I a puzzle. No, nope. I, just had I to didn't solve. like geometry. Miss me with the right, acute angles, all that. Nope. <laughs> I, I fell. I, I didn't fail, but I got a D in geometry. I failed time, the first time around. First half, for, I promise you. Like, okay, wait. We talking about tween years? Okay, okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, my tween years, I would have to say, I was exposed to a lot. Reflecting back, like really? thinking about Total it, opposite. like thinking about it, it's like. Damn, at that, okay, for example, I'm going to give y'all two stories about how between the ages of 8 and 12, I was exposed to some some shit, okay? First story. Fourth grade, I had moved to a new school. I used to go to school in L.A. on 36th Street. Um, And once I transferred new schools, I transferred to this school, I transferred to Linwood School District. Now, mind you, Linwood, if you don't know, Linwood is full of Mexicans. So, um, my school, I was the only black girl in my class. There was only, like, two black girls in the whole entire grade. Really? Yes. Like, it was, like, it was that crazy. So, like, I never forget one day at school, some of my classmates, they brought, like, stuff to make cigarettes at school like one girl brought the lighter one boy brought like the little papers to roll it and like then, the zigzag papers that's what it looked like it looked like zigzag Ooh. like at the time i didn't know what they were of course i'm in the fourth grade like i knew what zigzags like, like in the fourth grade what like no they, it wasn't a package though it was oh, just the paper like it was just papers like but they weren't the little papers they were like long papers so Ooh. yeah so it was like at that time i don't know what the like you know i'm like I don't know what this is. So they, like, went outside, like, into the corner of the, like, school at recess and, like, got the driest grass possible and, like, stuffed the papers and was trying to smoke. They were smoking. Smoking uh, smoking grass. Wow. Yes. I mean, okay, now reflecting because... I was ex- I was sheltered but yet exposed to yeah, a yeah, lot I was, of I was expo- stuff. I was exposed. Like, I got one. Tell your second story. I'm sorry. Um, I was like, I, like it, it's just crazy. Like thinking about that, like it's like, like damn, like how would you know how you know what's what what components are made out of a cigarette or you know those different things? Cause I didn't know like that thing. Like yeah, my parents like they smoke weed and stuff back in the day, but I like they made sure that I my mind wasn't on that. You know, and people be like, oh, like, you know, if you smoke or you do this, your kids gone. Da, da, da. Like my parents smoke weed my whole life. My mom still smokes weed to this day. I didn't start smoking until I was like 20 years old. 
So it's really interesting to hear people's different perspectives on that. Second story. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> this reminds me of, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie 13. Yeah. Okay. For those of you haven't that haven't seen the movie 13, it's crazy. It's about two white girls. They in middle school, but they be doing some crazy stuff. Like, they're exposed to so much as teenagers that you wouldn't even think yeah. that, you know, it happens. But, okay. Between the ages of 8 and 12, one time. <laughs> oh, shoot. One time, I had got this new neighbor, right, y'all? Ooh, new neighbor. Like. And my mama, my mama's super friendly. Like, she always want to talk to people and, like, get to know people and get all in their business and all that. So, she found out the neighbor had a daughter. So, the neighbor is like, oh, like, your daughter could come over and spend the night sometimes if she wants. And my mom is like, okay, cool. Like, I'm going to send her over with her bags, blah, blah, blah. So, I go over there. It's cool. I would never forget this. Scenario. Like, I would never forget this. So, I go over there, and the girl, she like, oh, you want some chips? I'm like, okay, like, cool. She like, what kind of chips you want? I'm like, I'll take some Doritos. Like, so she give me the Doritos. I'm sitting on the bed eating the chips, y'all. Just, we watching, I forgot who was watching. We was watching that movie, Double Trouble. Do you remember? I remember, remember Double Trouble. We was watching Double Trouble with Mary Kay Nash. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the bed. The girl says, you want to play house? I said, ooh. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> she said, you could be the mama and I could be the daddy. I'm like, what? And she tried to climb on top of me, y'all. Uh, and I pushed her and them Doritos up off of me. And I, I got my bags and I walked home. <laughs> and my mom asked me. Uh, to this day, she still doesn't know. She asked me. She's like, why you come home? What happened? I was like, I seen the roach. <laughs> Oh, I didn't want to tell her. Like, I damn near almost got molested by the eight year old. I was eight, y'all. Like, it, it was it was so like looking back. Like, I was so like, oh, like what is going on? But being that age, it's like, damn. And I know that was back in the day. That was like early two thousands. Yeah. I know now these little Kids tweens is out here experimenting, like, like crazy. And the internet is the blame. <laughs> YouTube. It's YouTube, I'm telling you. Because my nephew, I had to ban him from YouTube for a cool minute because when he was like, I swear, y'all, when I had to put the block on his YouTube. Because when he was like, between when he was from like 9 and 10, bro was obsessed with the Illuminati. Like, <laughs> he just could not stop researching the Illuminati. And I'm like... What are you so obsessed with this for? He like, have you heard Fetty Wap's new song? He said he a devil worshiper. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> how do you know this? I seen it on a YouTube video. Okay, you know what? We gonna keep you off YouTube. Like, no, not at all. Like, I, mm -mm, mm -mm. oh my god, them tween years. Yes, crazy. they be crazy. Cause I was exposed to some. Woo, I was exposed to some. Man. You and you don't even know it. And you know what's crazy? I feel like that's what made me the woman I am today. Because the same scenario you was in, I was in too. And you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I that's read. What made me, and that's what made me start being more interactive with women oh, than a kid. And yeah, I was men. like, Arr! And my mama said to me, don't do that. <laughs> that's the crazy part because my mom wouldn't tell me stuff and I couldn't talk to my mom because it was a point I was like 11 and I wanted to tell my mom like I thought girls was pretty but I could not tell my mom at 11? at 11 oh wow I, I, yeah this is I've always been this way a little freak I was <laughs> 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 just kidding <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that's 11, interesting. I though. knew, like, I was like, oh, she's pretty. Like, I always had an attraction to women. I've always thought women were pretty. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I just thought I don't. I didn't know what it was. Like, I was. I wasn't ashamed, but I was scared to tell my mom because I didn't know which how she was gonna react. Yeah, I'm 11. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how that. So it was just like. Then when little boys came around, I just started like a little boy since so I was 13. Mm. Literally at a teenager. Mm. Teenage years, something switched. I don't know what. And you like boys again? Yeah. 
Because I wasn't in elementary school. I really wasn't into guys. I was You like real... girls in elementary? No. Oh, I was going to say, no. no that's I, interesting. No. no, 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 no. You said 11. I'm sorry. You said 11. I forgot. No. I was in junior high when I figured that out. Mm. Like sixth grade, I figured it out. But in, in like grade school, elementary, boys were just boys and girls were just girls. I was in love in the fifth grade. I ain't gonna even lie. I thought I had my, a boyfriend I, in the fifth grade. I never had a boyfriend, but I thought this I person boyfriend. was gonna be my. It was like it was like that. How you kept calling her? Uh, what would you call him? Hell Helga good. last week. It was like that, but I wasn't mean to this boy. I was obsessed. With That's this how. Boy. Yeah, like, I was obsessed. I used to go home like the song. I never forget the song. Teenage Love Affair by Alicia. Alicia, Keys. oh lord! I used to sing that song in think about him like crazy but um that's definitely funny Ref- like when when i was in elementary school i liked i like i i liked one boy but it was because we like danced together i never forget my mama took me to a birthday party and we was dancing this one back that ass up first came out Ooh. was in the projects at a party and I was dancing, like I was really dancing on this boy. And my mama was cheering me on, like I was, and I was like, yeah. and it, was just, <laughs> <laughs> it was this cute little chocolate little. I think I was like five, y'all. Like I think I was no older than five, and I was dancing to back that ass up at a pool party too, in the projects. And my I, my mom and, used to turn that song off, but when I knew that little do 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 do. <laughs> you be ready for it. That's funny. That's so funny. Because I was, I was, I used to be bobbing my head to the back seat. Ah, turn it off. Ah, they gonna bleep it out. Girl, you working with some? Mm, yeah, some. Mm, yeah, I can just do this. They go, mm, yeah, it's cash. Yeah, his last year, like that. I that's irritated. And listen to radio edited certain songs now. It'd be like, oh. I just wish you would unbleep it. They should have like radio after dark. Maybe that's something we could do one day. Like radio after that, how they used to do like BT Uncut. Yeah. Oh. I remember I that was at two. to that. BT Uncut oh, as a, as a I tween. I got my ass beat, bro, by my mama because Nelly got me in trouble. Tindrew. As fine as he was, Nelly. When I tell you, I had was I was watching Moesha or something on BT, and I fall asleep, wake up at three in the morning, and all I all I see is. Legs and cash and booty. I was like, I watched it. (laughs) I'm watching. I'm like, it must be your ass because it ain't your face. I need a tip (laughs) drill. Tip drill is crazy. So I'm really dancing to it. I never forget. You know the wood. I had a moment like that off the wood. I was dancing on like. I was dancing with this big old bear that my granny had that she gave to me. It was like from Wait, 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 pause. So I was twelve. Let me get this straight. No, I was like ten. I was ten. You was tip drilling it on the teddy bear. On a rabbit. Okay. I just I just needed clarity because I was mimicking what I seen and then you're sick. <laughs> you was tip drilling it on a teddy bear. No, I was dancing with the teddy bear. I was like, I want to learn how to dance. Because, like, on my block, the older girls, they were already talking about dancing on guys. And I wanted to fit in. So I never forget, like, that happened. And never. my mama went to the bathroom. I guess she see my silhouette trying to dance. Oh, my. And she was like, really? What the? What? Because you was tip drilling it on a teddy bear. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it wasn't even like that. Like the, <laughs> It was like that. No. <laughs> it was like that. My mom put two and two together so quick because I wasn't, like, dancing <coughs> on the teddy bear. Like, the teddy bear was, like, in the... <laughs> so you was giving the teddy bear a strip tease. <laughs> you was, like, like, giving him a private dance. You are interesting. Oh. You're an interesting character. Like that makes me only wonder what else have you done throughout your like tween years. Like, um, you're 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 something. Interesting. Man, I I just feel like I don't know. See, I was also exposed to my mom and my daddy too. I caught them doing some stuff too. I know. I've never come. I've parents. caught my parents. I was exposed to that. I was supposed to, like, I was sheltered, but yet I, it was always that quick one second of your life that you'd be like, oh, 
Yeah. Well, what does that? How do yeah. you do that? Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Like that's and then me, I'm I'm a daredevil, so I'ma just do it. From eight to twelve <laughs> I got into my first like fight, but it was like my brother, I have an older brother. He's nine years older than me. And when I was like eight, it was this girl in my building mm-hmm. that I didn't like. And my brother was like, okay, you don't like her? You're going to box with her. And we started boxing. <laughs> and she punched me in my face. She punched me so hard with them gloves. like, And I just swung the gloves off. And I just started whooping her ass. Like, <laughs> I got so mad. Like, why? Like it was just like, like my, y'all, my head was like, dude, like... <laughs> It was like, like she got me clean in my nose, like like one and it was like a real quick jab, like. <laughs> but that that's you know it's funny. I got into um, me and my cousin used to fight a lot. Me and my cousin Alexis, we fought a lot. It was like she had got me a couple times. I got her a couple times. My first real fight was my neighbor's nieces or cousins or two. They were twins. It was a set of twins. And one of the set of twins didn't like me for whatever freaking reason. I don't know. I can't even remember. But I just remember, like, we just get into it. And she started choking me. Like, I had asthma. Like, I could have died. Why does everybody say that? I choked somebody in, when I was 10. Okay, not like that. Not that I go around no, choking like she people. Really choked but the that shit was out of that me. was his excuse that he. It was a boy, by the way, that I choked, and his excuse was that he had asthma, and I had to go to the office, and I got a referral, and almost I got really, kicked out of school but because I really of that. that had comment. asthma. I really had asthma at the time. My asthma was so bad, and like I was like, bitch. <laughs> I'm trying to get bitch. her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying to call her a bitch. Like I was like. Ah. Yeah, I and didn't my, curse at, and my at mom's neck. Okay, cause my <laughs> house. Okay, to the left was my mama um, neighbor by the name of Robert House, and then to the right of us was uh, my neighbor by the name of Nathan. And so Robert had to come break up the fight. He was like, "Really? What's wrong with you?" I was like, "She started it. Like I wasn't gonna back down." Like, That's funny. Um, <laughs> moving on, like. From the tween years to the teen years. Oh, these teenagers. You know, teenage teenagers then when I was, you know, when I was a teenager versus now. Don't get me wrong, a teenager is gonna be a teenager. You're gonna Regardless. always have teenagers doing drugs, having sex, that type of thing. Although I didn't partake in that when I was in high school because when I was in high school, I was really focused. My parents, they really they trained the, the hell out of me. Like ba- between basketball, volleyball, and school. I didn't have no outside life until, like, my senior year. That's when I was just like, you know what? I cut volleyball, and then I was like, you know, I got more time to myself. But I say that to say the teenagers now, I feel like social media, and I will always say this, social media has a big part to play in it. because absolutely. They're so exposed at wanting to fit in, wanting to be a part of something, wanting to look. A, certain, a way. certain way, act a certain way, dress a certain way because of what they see on Instagram or because of what gets a lot of likes or what gets a lot of views yeah. or what goes viral. Like, that's what it's all about now. Like, it's about that digital heart, that digital, that, that digital emptiness, that not filling any voids. That's where the distinction between teenagers then versus the teenagers that are now and for future generations oh, if you absolutely. don't change that that path of you don't have to try to fit in do you and another thing that i always say it's these clothing lines like back when i was in high school forever 21 clothes didn't look how they look now now. (laughs) like forever 21 wasn't really like forever 21 like teeny bopper you know that's why girls stopped shopping there because it was so teeny bopper and then forever 21 like all right we gonna change the game up like y'all talking about we teeny bopper let me let us throw a little fashion a little high fashion into it and these teenage girls nowadays not let alone you to make up in the weaves like not necessarily saying a weave is a bad thing because when i was in high school girls were wearing weaves but this makeup thing this makeup thing I wasn't exposed to makeup as a teenager. Not even, yeah, that's what I'm saying. These girls now, like, they they're going to face, they're going to school face B. That's why these teachers be messing with these kids. Like, they go in there. They go in, they, what they got on, they're so yeah. exposed, you know? Like, it's really an interesting dynamic to see how, you know, the mind frame of a teenager now. Like, if you talk to a teenager now and really 
like they act like they grown. Yeah, they act like they grown, or they're gonna be totally oblivious. Like there, there has you Man. come across those kids who are so special and bright and have that that level. I don't know how, but that level of consciousness of being aware. But for the most part. They just riding away because we're so we're so impressionable at that age. Mm-hmm. Being told something, oh, do this or this or it, you know, it goes both ways. So with all of this that's going on, I don't blame them. It's like it looks good exactly. at that age. It's like we were thinking about that, but we weren't exposed to it. Yeah, Everything yeah, was that's just now. True. It's, it was just now rolling out, like with Facebook and mm-hmm. stuff. Because I was like. I can only imagine how high school would be if I had Instagram and Snapchat in high school. I would not pay attention. Like, I'd be on there. All- exactly. I would be so into what's going on on the outside world. And, oh, she got this. She got this caught eye. She got this coat. I need that. Like, you know, it's so crazy to just see the dynamic. And just think about it. When we were in high school, when we were teenagers, there was AIM. Yeah. So AIM was the start of it all. Yeah. Period. I don't care what nobody says. I'm talking about the real social media, like with pictures and stuff. Because with AIM, it we wasn't didn't have pictures. No pictures. It was just, it was we was just talking. Icon. We're just chatting with everybody. We're just really conversating, just really talking to people. But once Facebook, well, MySpace MySpace. Too. MySpace, but we were really still, it was the MySpace was, yeah. area. And then with Facebook, it was like, okay. What's this? this? Is, yeah, this is a little different. We got to kind of step it up a little bit. And then Twitter and Instagram came along. I feel like Instagram changed the entire game. Definitely so. Instagram and I got on the Instagram it. train late. I did, I did too. Yeah, I started, late. Late. I started I got. I got my Instagram like three years, like three, four years. I was on Snapchat when it first came out. Before it was a, even a story. Where really? you just Before, where you could just only snap people and send snaps between, back and forth between you and other people. Really? Yep. Oh, I, I've dang. been on Snap before all these filter came, Snapcash, all of that. That's crazy. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. But us as a teenager, like, I feel like when I was a teenager and teenagers now, I, I feel like the suicide rate definitely went up from when we were teenagers until oh, now. Yeah. Even with little kids, though, Even, and the tweens. Yeah. And I meant to touch bases on that because yeah. we weren't exposed to that. We weren't. As tweens, That's and true. now tweens are because kids are so mean mm-hmm. because what they see on the internet, parents, and then it goes is a reflection of the parent because the parent, even though I'm not a parent myself, but it's like as a parent, you should be learning and controlling and monitoring what your kids are watching mm-hmm. because my mom saying was monitoring as well though too what they saying because a lot of these little kids be out here trolling, yes. making fake accounts and shit. Yes, they really do, and. Kids are just so smart, and it's like they, and it's, it's crazy how a kid could be so smart. It's, yeah, they be, yeah, they, it's interesting. Oh my to, goodness. And it's like parents just try to monitor and control what your kids are doing because you putting it on social media and, you know, and, and thinking, like, you know, for thinking it's okay for that digital heart, it's not okay. No. Nah. Because then the child thinks it's okay. And when the child thinks it's okay, then it's over. Yeah. The teenagers now, like, yeah. That that that's, that bullying stuff is definitely it's crucial. not cool. I remember reading a story about the girl who got jumped in the bathroom and died yes. off of that. Like, it, 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 you know, people doing stuff for social media, like... Or even, go, trying to go or viral. even or even those kids I read about a, a couple weeks ago those those boys who are in trouble for seeing that person drown and they didn't do anything but they put it on snapchat oh yeah they didn't call the police they didn't try to help the man like and they snapped they was telling like Sandy like oh you shouldn't have walked in there type like it's really interesting like kids because of this because of this because of this phone kids are having lack of empathy lack of remorse um they don't care because it's what they see they don't care it's just all they're they're creating this self-centered ego that's surrounding these children that you, it's all about the materialisticness. You know, it's all about that stuff. And music is really impressionable. How these kids, oh, how all, especially in the African American community, how all these little boys walk around with the same hairstyle. Like, you same. know the hairstyle. You know the hairstyle. I like, know. the little <laughs> shit shit at the top. Like, it, it's just ridiculous. And even girls, I see girls like, okay, I understand you have your weave, you know, but you're they in the 10th grade man. and you have a 30 inch weave. What is that? For real. What is that? I, I, 
I don't understand. You go to school, you 15, 14, going to school, your face is beat like you're going to an award ceremony. Eyelashes. My mom barely let me wear eyeliner. I had CarMax. CarMaxed it up, made it look like a little lip gloss sometimes if I put enough on. But... Eyeliner was the, that was it. No mascara. No, like, she was like, you can line your eye a little bit. That's it. You're not going past that. I and I wore mascara. eyeliner all through high school. I even taught one of my friends how to put on eyeliner. And by the time we was done with high school, she was coming to school with her face beat. And I was still just putting on eyeliner. Like, and you know, my makeup skills didn't develop until I really started getting into modeling. And that's when I was like, all right. Let me kind of, you know, be in my bag a little bit. And, you know, because I feel like as a woman, you should know how to apply makeup. Not necessarily saying, you know, that's your everyday life or a requirement for woman, women. But if you like to keep yourself up, you know, just know how to apply it. Don't go overboard where you're looking super strong and having strong features. But, you know, just a little liner or a little lipstick. Me right now, I just have on lipstick and top eyeliner. Like, my face is clear. Like... You know, it's just a little bit. I don't know how to put on makeup. All I know (laughs) how to do is eyeliner and mascara. And And that's all you need, realistically. I I always tell people that all you need is just make that little eye pop, a little lip gloss, a little Carmax. That's all you need. These teenagers nowadays, they think you need to be contoured up in order to be beautiful. Like, no, love yourself. My mom never really. I used to be like, oh, mama, can I? Nope, (laughs) don't do it. Don't do it. My mama always told me, not do it. Don't do it. You're going to mess up your skin. Yep. Mm -hmm. My mama always told me that. Especially as black women, our butt don't crack. Like, get your skin on that beautiful wave of milkiness where every time you step out into the sun, the sun is just soaking up all of your chocolatey goodness. (laughs) I love melanin. Man. (laughs) All right. Now, moving on, we're going to go into an error game that we decided to play. We're going to spice it up and make today's episode a little bit more fun. So... Let's starting with the 90s to not from 90 from the year 1990 to 1999. We're going to go ahead and talk about our favorite dance, brand, movie, show and artist. So my favorite dance in the 90s was the kid and play. The kid and play. <laughs> I used to always do that at the family functions. And y'all know this right here. This one right here. Hey, this right hey, here. Hey, you know what the name of this is called? Mm. The Reebok. Oh, the Reebok. Yeah, this right here. I never knew that. That was it. My favorite. Ge- I don't know. Like nineties or ninety nine. I didn't like favorite brand wise. Like what? What? First of all, what was your favorite dance in the nineties? I was about to say you just gonna skip me. Um, my favorite dances of the nineties. Number one was the bank head bounce. You feel me? I was the bank head bounce on them and the tick. <laughs> I used to tick like you remember the tick 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 tick. I used to tick a lot. (laughs) (laughs) That's a real throwback. We used to tick tick. The the tick tick was like a level below the crybaby. Like if you was ticking, (gasps) you might you was almost crybaby. I was couldn't crybaby. I couldn't crybaby. Out. My mama did not play that with that crybaby or the washing machine. The you be washing the floor. (laughs) But um. Yeah, those are my favorite dances. What's your favorite brand? Favorite brand? Mm, my mom had me in a lot of Gap and K-Swiss and um, Guess. Okay, uh, me, I really liked Guess, and it was a store called Limited 2. <gasps> oh, my God, I yes. love Limited 2. Like, I, man, everything I in my closet majority was from Limited 2. Really? I was so sad when it shut down. Yep. Oh, I remember that store. <laughs> oh, my God. I had so much stuff up. Right? Crazy. <gasps> Ah, all right. Favorite movie. My favorite movie of the 90s is Higher Learning. What is high? What is higher? What is learn? What is learning? What is higher learning? If you haven't seen that movie with Malachi or Malik, you gotta see it. It's with Ice Cube and uh, Omar Epps. And Tyler Banks. Yeah. All what right, my favorite. favorite it is so cliche. House party? No. Oh. Mulan and Juice. <laughs> Mulan and Juice. <laughs> I love Mulan. Like, y'all understand. I'm that that Asian princess. I love because Mulan, as a child growing up watching that movie, it made me really realize and understand that's how I felt. I really felt that way. Mm. I understood Mulan growing up. Like I I I I 
that movie did something to me as a kid. I used to sit there and watch it for hours. Man, I would get so mad if my mama changed it. I got all these other Disney movies, and you just want to watch Mulan with the Asian girl. <laughs> I just loved the whole concept of the movie. What was your favorite show? Favorite show, Fresh Prince. Hey, and Martin. Mine's was Mo Tada, Tada, <laughs> Moesha. Everybody, oh, that's what I got a lot of my tweens. You look just like Moesha. Mo Tada. That's when I met you. When you look like Mo Tada, Tada. Every time I got braids, you know you look like Brandy. Cause that's all Brandy wore was braids in the nineties. And I'm just like, I just got so used to it now. <laughs> It doesn't even phase me anymore. It'd Favorite like artist. And back then, I was obsessed, and I still am obsessed. I don't care. Leave my baby alone, Usher. Um, that was it. He was everything to me. That My Way CD, I used to just my stare. Way. Like, he was just, like, on the, like, my if y'all don't know, way. like, the album cover, he was kind of like, you know, like just, this. like, you know, with his beanie on, he just looks so, like, what? Like, and that's when I fell in love with Usher. When I seen that My Way CD, I was like, <sighs> What about you? <laughs> Usher and Tupac. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tupac, like, honestly, it was something. Growing up, that's when my mom used to play a lot. A lot of Tupac. Mm. And still to this day, I don't know all the words to a Tupac song. But you I, knew every, I knew every chorus to it. <laughs> but it's like, now I know a little bit more. To learn, like, now. But, gro- like, then... I kind of, what's the word? I understood what Tupac was saying mm. in a way as a kid growing up listening to him. Mm-hmm. Like, changes t- changed my whole life. I, changes? Changes changed my whole entire life. And then that's when I started to really look into Tupac and really go and see into him as a him. person and, yeah. and, and as an artist. I got you. I got you. That's, what, that's why I just, I love him. Okay. Now going into the 2000s favorite dance. <laughs> My favorite dance in the beginning of the 2000s, like from 2000 to like 2004. I like the Harlem Shake. And then moving in to the end of the early to end to the end of the 2000s, the Dougie. Teach me how that Dougie. Teach me how that Dougie. I used to Dougie everywhere. Oh man! What about you? What you? Mine did? was chicken head. Hey, I, that's what you do, that right there. <laughs> I still even. I'll be, be really in the club with some. I'll be going around with it. <laughs> oh man, it just brings me back. Like when I was really chicken head, because I used to be in like a lot of dance battles, and that was like it. And jerking, hey. jerking was it too? Jerk. Jerk. Towards the Jerk. end. Okay, favorite brand. Okay, once again, I don't know. For this category, I kind of have two of each, except for, like, two categories. Um, In the beginning, I love Rock Aware. Like, Rock Aware was everything to me. Like, when I was in middle school, that's what I was rocking, Rock Aware, okay? Um, And then the end, like, the end of the 90s, uh, 90s, the end of the 2000s, I kind of developed my tomboy stage going into high school. So I was really into Nike, like, okay. heavy. What about you? Um, baby fat, apple bottom jeans. Hey, um, boots with the fur. <laughs> rock aware. And then going towards the end of the 2000s, it was more so like, honestly, I didn't like really get like no name brand stuff. It was just stuff from Ross, Target, TJ Maxx. Not not Target, TJ Maxx. Uh, uh, Mercy's, Marcy's. Wh- Mer- Mervin. There we go. I was going to say Mervin's. That was my story too. Favorite movie? Freedom Riders. And that is always in my top five. I love that that movie. What ATL, all about the Benjamins and the Incredibles. Hey, ATL. That's I feel like that's a that's a cult classic. That's a classic. ATL. Um favorite show. Half and half girlfriends. <laughs> Flavor of love. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I got introduced into reality TV. Same here. Okay. Same here. Artist? Chris Brown, Sierra. B2K and Trey Songs. All right. Moving on to the tens and beyond. What was your favorite dance? Twerk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at the beginning, I like to cook. You know, you cook it, whip it, whip it. And then I kind of made it into a Millie Rock. <laughs> 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 What's your favorite brand? Uh, Forever 21, H&M. The usual, like, boutiques. Then I, okay. I'm not really into, like, the big name brands. It's just whatever's cute at this point. Cheap, nice, looks good on me. Forever that, 21. That, that's the wave that I'm on right now. Everywhere, you know, you know, get your bang for your budget. That's how I feel. It's it's more, you know? That's how I feel. 
Uh, what about movies? I thought you was gonna ask that. Oh, I'm gonna go get you. Uh, no. In the beginning, <laughs> I thought you was gonna ask it. Oh, I was I'm just sorry. Oh, okay, you just look at. Okay, what's your? I'm sorry. Favorite brand. Favorite movie. Uh, my favorite movie right now. It's since we are in this era and we're not done. But so far, it's Get Out. I'm really, I'm really digging that movie and the message and the moral. Absolutely. Uh, I put Deadpool. I love Deadpool. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, <laughs> I laugh every single time. And in the beginning of the. Tens was prom night. I don't know if you yeah with Britney Snow. I yeah. loved it. Uh, what's your favorite show? Uh, the game, Bad Girls Club, How to Get Away with Murder. <laughs> and last but not least, favorite artist of this time right now. I'm on this new wave of R&B. I'm digging Kaylani, Bryson Tiller, Six Flags, every, every everything like everybody that's just in this new you know era. I'm digging it. What about you? Drake, Bryson Tiller, Kaylani. Tory Lanes. Hey. All right, guys, that wraps up this week's episode of The Perspective. Please be sure to tune in with us, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Please be sure to follow me, Raylene Inez, with one Z on Twitter, Raylene Inez with two Zs on Instagram, Raider Rose, three A's on the Snapchat. Destiny, go ahead, tell them where they can find you at. You can find me on Instagram at Destiny Denise with three E's on the end of Denise. And you can follow me on Snapchat and Twitter at Destiny Denise with two E's on the end destiny d-e-s-t-i-n-y alrighty <laughs> that ends this week's episode of the perspective we'll see you guys next week bye, bye. Oh. <laughs>